Hello and a very warm welcome to today's session brought to you by Team Biotrues Exam Prep. I hope all of you are doing really well. Through the course of this lecture, we will start our entire journey for a couple of lectures where we're going to be covering end-to-end -end some important papers. Uh, today is, of course, a brief sneak peek, sneak peek. So we'll be covering 15 important questions from the NTA UGC NET 2020 Morning Shift Paper 2. Uh, these are uh, questions that had come in in your exams and we're going to be looking at these questions now why first of all uh, we need to also understand why is it important for us to do the questions why are we taking so much of pain why are we taking so much of effort to complete the questions what is the relevance of completing questions from the examination perspective that really has to be made very clear see understand that the previous year's questions help you identify a pattern that you can recognize in the paper and once when you've identified the pattern of the paper it becomes a lot more simpler for all of you to identify that okay this is the pattern of the paper this is how I'm supposed to be covering the topics these are where my energies should be lying it becomes a lot more easier for everybody to prepare right so previous year's questions are really very helpful in order to help you letting you know about the various patterns that are there various aspects which you all should be knowing helping you around with uh, figuring out some commonly asked questions uh, a lot of times you know there are these questions which are recurrently coming in different formats look for instance you yourself see it right modern age writings like Bex waiting for Godot they've asked you questions in so many forms so at least you're able to identify which are the relevant topics that I definitely have to cover, which are the most important topics, which are the most relevant topics that I should definitely cover. So that of course becomes critically crucial. So today's uh, brief lecture, let us quickly complete the morning shift 15 questions that had come. After this class, you can probably quickly take a look at the 2020 morning shift paper, practice it end to end. We will cover it uh, over the coming of uh, coming times as well. Good morning, everybody. Good morning and I hope all of you are joining us for our 8, 8 a.m. lectures. We are meeting regularly from uh, Tuesday to Saturday except for Sunday I think or probably Sunday I'll have to check that as well but we are almost meeting six days in a week for these really important classes on the Baijus exam prep net application platform so please tune in. I'll start streamlining it and sending the details over the telegram platform as well. I'll start sharing that as well. Good morning everybody. Good morning Nithi, Ganga, Sushmita. Uh, there's Tehmina, Anamali Varsi, Prerna, Ravi, Manju, Siali, Ravi, Kuhu. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. There's Kanupriya, Kriti above that. Roots and Legacies, good morning. Roots and Legacies, like, good morning, ma'am. Good morning, everybody. Okay, good morning. All right. So, uh, without further ado, let's just very quickly get started with today's session. And uh, today, we're going to be looking at, like I told you, these 15 questions. So, here we go with the 15 questions. This is the first question that has come. Which one of the following Sherlock Holmes stories refers to a significant event in the English history? It is referring to a significant event in the English English history. There is an important event that has taken place in English history and it is referring to a significant event in English history. Which work are we talking about? Which work are we talking about? Let's just see how many of us are able to answer this question correctly. Uh, let's just quickly figure it out. How many of us are able to get this answer? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I haven't really got the right answer yet. No, Vahida, it's not 10. It's not 10. Ravi, uh, okay. Hemlata, good morning. No, it's not that. Wow, Hemlata and Rakesh have got the right answer. Hemlata and Rakesh have got the right answer. That is absolutely the right answer over here. Which of the following Sherlock Holmes stories is referring to the significant event in English history? It's the Musgrove Rituals. The Adventures of the Musgrove Ritual. It is a short story by, Sh like, you know, uh, our short story that, uh, that we're able to see that Arthur Conan Doyle is writing. It's a Sherlock Holmes series that we're having. It is narrated by Holmes himself to Watson. Sherlock Holmes the fictional character is narrating that to Watson. Remember Arthur Conan Doyle is the person who's starting this trend. Detective fiction is as it is becoming very important. The story is associated with the English Civil War. 
this particular story must prove ritual it is associated with the english civil war that was taking place the english civil war that we were having that is what it's actually dealing with and please keep that in mind it is also talking about the crowning of charles the second remember the english civil war that is taking place and finally the, during the restoration the crowning that takes place the crowning of charles the second the the crowning of charles the second you can get this question that arthur conan doyle is dealing with the uh the english civil war and the restoration history in which work the musgrove ritual is the right answer so holmes is actually telling us the story um that you know he is saying it is an incident in the story that holmes cleans up the metal and stones and reveals the gold crown he is revealing the gold crown which is there uh, so what you are able to see is that um you see for instance holmes is uh, you know holmes is there holmes is there in a particular area and he is trying to tell watson that you know this is a metal that i have cleaned and what is this this was the crown of charles the the second this was the crown of charles the uh, king charles the first king charles the first and we are able to see that you come to know the rituals that were there uh, the rituals that were um, were uh, were laid down during the coronation event altogether that is what you are able to see so the musgrove rituals this is a story which is telling about a significant event what is that event the english civil war and crowning of charles the second that is the event musgrove rituals is the right answer over here okay all right let's move on to the next question which book of paradise lost incorporates the speech rhythm of adam and eve's marital quarrel the marital quarrel that is taking place which which book is telling about the marital quarrel right the marital quarrel, quarrel because obviously uh, partners would quarrel so which of them is dealing with the marital quarrel all together let's just see how many of you are able to get the right answer here uh great 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 most of you are get, getting it right Yes 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 most of you are writing it right book 9 is the right answer now there are two to three important uh, aspects of discussion okay see quarrel is uh, is is a very common aspect when you are talking about partners right quarrel is something which is really common now what is a quarrel taking place the first quarrel very important quarrel is that eve is saying i am going to earn my bread i will go outside i will hunt i will get the food and then we'll have it and it's like what are you doing you know we are we are aristocrats we have everything in the Uh, in the park in the garden of eden you don't have to work so these are called the proto capitalist notions versus the aristocratic uh, the uh, aristocratic notions of work these are the two kinds of work uh, notions that we are having we are having the proto capitalist notions of work we are having the proto capitalist notions of work the proto capitalist notions of work what do we mean by the proto capitalist notions of work that means i will work hard i will get the remuneration for the amount so eve is having proto capitalist notions of work whereas adam is having aristocratic notions of work that oh we don't what, what do aristocrats do what do aristocrats do uh, 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 even right now when you look at the landed gentry imagine if a lot of people are having say for instance say for, uh, you know rakesh kohu niti ganga uh, kanupriya sanjana they are they are owning buildings right they are owning buildings in gurgaon and uh, so there there is rent that is coming from that particular building each and every uh, apartment is helping them get rent over there so so then they don't have to work hard right they just have to collect the rent and then that's how they are able to generate money so uh, what we are able to see over here is that this is an aristocratic notion of work that you don't have to work right you don't have to get up in the morning complete your tasks complete your chores that's not what you have to do right you don't really have to work harder so that is that is what is famously termed as a kind of a aristocratic notion of work where you don't toil there is no element of toil so that is most important banter that takes place that's the most important aspect that takes place but also what you are able to see is the the quarrel that you know when eve's fallen and adam is trying to justify and even he falls out of your joriousness that's also quarrel so book 9 is a very domesticated so uh, there can be another question okay there can be another question that you can get book 6 of the iliad is a domestic uh, domestic section because you are able to see that it is dealing with the episode of hector and andromache hector the man who is fighting the trojan war is also having a domesticated life Uh, it domesticated in the sense like he's also having a domestic personal life and dromache is the wife that he's having so book 6 of the iliad is also telling you the domestic aspect what is the domestic aspect called in greek literature oikos 
Oikos is the domestic sphere. Polis is the public sphere that we are talking about. Polis is the public sphere that we are having. So book six of the Iliad is talking about the, the domestic aspect. Book six of the Iliad is telling us about Hector and Andromache. Book six of the Iliad is telling us that Hector is also having a family. And then you have, you have Euripides, the playwright, who's telling you about the domesticated as he's, so when we, when we look at Euripides, for instance, when we look at Euripides, for instance, we are able to see that Euripides is actually giving us insights that these people are also having a family life. Or look at, look at the episode in the Iliad where Thetis, the mother of Achilles, <coughs> sorry, that is the mother of Achilles is coming with the shield of Achilles to protect her son. Right? Is coming uh, with the shield of Achilles to protect the son. So these are the lives where you're getting the personal lives of these people as well. Okay. All right. Let's move on to the next question. You have to arrange the following magazines in chronological order. <coughs> Sorry. Just put the chronological order in, in place. <coughs> So sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yes, so which is this work that we're talking about? Which is this work? Uh, sorry, not which is this work? What is the chronology that we're dealing with? Let's just cover it together. The Gentleman's Magazine, right? The Gentleman's Magazine that we are having. This is coming in 1731. Okay. This is coming in 1731 that you are having and that to January. January 1731. The Monthly Review. The Monthly Review is from 1749 to 1845. That is the monthly review. This was founded by Ralph Griffiths. This was founded by Ralph Griffiths, right? This was actually founded by Ralph Griffiths. Ralph Griffiths was the person, right? Ralph Griffiths was the person. The Rambler. The Rambler. The Rambler was a periodical which is started by Samuel Johnson, right? And that is also, uh, so, so Rambler, a lot of times you're getting the questions also re regarding a Rambler. When was it coming? It was coming on Tuesdays and Saturdays. When was the Rambler coming? It was coming on Tuesdays and Saturdays from 7.50 to 17, uh, from 17.50 to 1752 and there were a total of 208 issues there were a total of 208 issues that we had the critical review the critical review it was a magazine from 1756 to uh, say 1817 right and this was first edited by Tobias Smollett this was first edited by Tobias Smollett now if we have all the dates I hope you are able to see that the gentleman's review that is uh, that is your um, your your third book is the third part is coming first followed by uh, you are able to see the monthly review is coming then you are having the rambler and finally you are having the critical review right can you just see 31 49 56 and this is going to be uh, 50 right b b because it's starting can you can you just see that that it's starting a little later one second one second one second I'll just place it uh, together again. This is going to be 3, 2, 4 and 1. Yeah, 3, 2, 4 and 1. Okay, that is the order that we are talking about. Now, the question emerges, how are we supposed to be learning the periodicals that are coming? Now, for the periodicals that are coming in your syllabuses, what you have to basically do is always make a list. Okay, just make a list at the back of your notepad. So, whatever notepads you are using, just quickly create a list at the back of that particular notepad. If this is your notebook, uh, what you can do is at the back of your notepad just create a list okay just create a segmented list of periodicals this is just like you know kind of an appendix that you can make um, and in that it just write out so for instance today you come across these questions um, we are practicing questions so we'll very much talk about the the 19th century and 18th century periodicals also every now and then when we are doing questions we are talking about remember yesterday in the morning class we had also talked about the blast the wartest manifesto i hope you are able to keep that in mind some of you are attending the classes regularly so creation of the list is actually really important for you to understand this better till the time you will not be able to under create that list altogether uh, you know things will not be clear so 
today for instance if you are doing this unit just make sure that you're creating a list just make sure that you're getting a list just make sure that you are talking out that particular list and these at least are definitely going in that list altogether who among the following feminist theorists posited separate realm of female experience captured in a writing style different from men different from men this time in the uh, classes the morning eight o'clock lectures uh, the the free uh, apps uh, sessions as well we've been talking about dorothy Rich Richardson's view, uh, right? That women have to create their own unique voice altogether. We've been discussing that in classroom class, also in American literature. What Emerson talks about creating an original indigenous voice altogether. So, what is the right answer here? I'm so sorry. I'll just blow my nose. <coughs> so sorry. Falling sick is like the the most obnoxious thing. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Most of you are getting it right. Most of you are getting it right. That is the... So see, remember when we are talking about Ikritya, the concept of Ikritya feminine, that is of course something which is getting purported. Uh, we are able to see that, you know, uh, so so please over here, remember that, that Irigiri as well as Siksu, Irigiri as well as Siksu, both of them are predominantly trying to tell us about uh, A, that how women are supposed to be writing their own writing, how women are actually, uh, you know, they've got a different experience and therefore their writings would also be different. Uh, remember this this week we had also studied a different view on this we had talked about the school of resentment i hope you're all so today in the morning a morning lecture also at eight o'clock this is what i told you please revise your wednesday thursday friday saturday the four lectures that we had in the morning just review them i'll share the link of all of them on the telegram platform this weekend so that all of you can revise them and uh, because you know this is how you have to uh, definitely make sure that you are dealing with all the questions in a proper manner so irigari is of course coming in irigari is talking about that the production of meaning is also patriarchal production of meaning right what is Irigiri saying Irigiri says that there is a production the production of meaning is also very uh, patriarchal we, we are looking at things from the very patriarchal perspective altogether uh, she's talking about getting to the essence uh, always right so Irigiri remember what is she writing speculum of the other woman speculum of the other woman 1974 and this sex which is not one this sex which is not one 1977 both these works are by Irigiri they are both important they are criticizing fallacy Phalagocentricism. They are criticizing phalagocentricism. They are really critical of the phalagocentricism. Uh, Helen Sixu is also coming. Sixu, remember, is very famous for her essays called Sorties. S O R T I E S. Sorties and the Laugh of Medusa. And she is talking about Ikritya feminine. So, what are the four works that you will definitely have to remember? Speculum of the Other Woman, 1974 by Irigiri. And This Sex, which is not once, 1977 by Irigiri. Sorties and the Laugh of Medusa by Helen Sixo is also equally important. Both of them are trying to say we need to get out of the masculine production. We need to create our own meaning altogether. We must create our own meaning altogether. That is something which uh, they are trying to specify. So please keep that in mind. Okay. Moving on to the next question very quickly. Which two poems in the following list are examples of dramatic monologues? Which are examples of dramatic monologue? Which are examples of dramatic monologue? So where are we able to see that the dramatic monologues are coming in? Dramatic monologues are coming in. Where can we see that? Dramatic monologues. <clears throat> okay. Uh... I, it's not on my phone's not allowing me to put it in the chat box okay uh so it's not allowing me to put it in the chat box it's really awkward okay uh anyway okay uh i have subscribed though i don't know why i've subscribed though but it's not really taking in 
Yes, yes, absolutely right. Uh, so Ulysses uh, is an example of a dramatic monologue and Medusa, Medusa. So you can remember, now you can correlate. We did Laugh of Medusa by Sixu, which is talking about women should have their own voice. And even Carol Ann Duffy's Medusa is also talking about the same. So dramatic monologue where I am speaking in the presence of a listener, but I am driving the speech altogether and the other person is silently listening to me, right? That is a dramatic monologue altogether. But I'm revealing my own self. Alfred Tennyson's Ulysses 1855, Carol Ann Duffy's Medusa 1999. These are examples of what is famously termed as your dramatic monologue. So uh, Alfred Tennyson's Ulysses, then uh, Carol Ann Duffy's Medusa, they are all examples of what is famously termed as your dramatic monologues. Who makes the following speech in Samuel Beck's Waiting for Godot? A stride of a grave and, and a difficult birth. Down in the hole, lingeringly, the grave digger puts on the forceps. The grave digger puts on the forceps. <clears throat> Okay, that is a genius that we have in the chat box, and that is Cook with Smuf, uh, uh, Sumfi. This is this is this is actually a UPSC class going on. Cook with Smuffy. It's not paper one. It's not paper two. This is a UPSC class which is going on. Am I right, everybody? If you think I'm right, you can put a yes in the chat box. <clears throat> Some of you don't read the titles, you don't read anything, you're just like, you know, bang on life, children, chalo, let's just dive in, no? Okay, yes, most of you are getting the right answer, it is Vladimir, it is Vladimir. So we are able to see over here, we are able to see over here that Vladimir is saying these, these lines, a stride of a grave and a difficult birth, down in the hole, lingeringly, the grave digger puts on his forceps, right? Uh, the grave, yes, Manju is the most intelligent person, Rakesh is also intelligent, we, this is a UPSC uh, class that is taking place where we're talking about Indian economy um, and post Indian economy we will get into history and after history we will be looking at geography as well and post geography we will be looking at product management then we will be looking at uh, digital marketing as well so that is the thing okay I think either she's gone or he's gone or okay all right so so Vladimir is saying these lines Vladimir is saying these lines remember now what is happening the two tramps Vladimir and Estragon they are waiting while they are waiting what are they doing they're having these discussions so you've got questions on discussions you've got questions on Lucky and Pozo you've got questions almost on everybody so uh, Vladimir is the person who's saying these lines which are the following are the major themes in William Congreve's The Way of the World which are the major themes that we are having which are the major themes in William Congreve's way of the world this week we had looked at incognita by William Congreve we had also looked at uh, I think uh, a question related to the characters so please revise William Congreve also that is what I'm saying I'll share the links of all the uh, the classroom classes that we had this week uh, sorry not the classroom classes the app classes that we had this week just do take a look at it yes second is the right answer second is the right answer Congreve's the way of the world 1700 uh, is dealing with love and intrigue it is dealing with love and intrigue right so that is important uh, now please remember they are representing uh, you know so so understand this today only we have looked at a question where we talked about how Sherlock Holmes uh, is telling Watson in Arthur Conan Doyle's work right so when we are looking at it he is talking about how you are able to see that the civil war had taken place or uh, how essentially the crown is figured out so you can make those correlations and put it together so the Musgrove rituals that we were talking about remember the Musgrove rituals we started today's class by looking at the Musgrove rituals so while you are compiling your notes on restoration these are th certain things that you can write in your notes this will really make your studies interesting you know I'll, I'll, I'll tell you so so there's this professor um, and uh, the, 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 he's, he's not a professor of literature uh, but he says teaching is all about aha moment that one aha moment that you have to give right that one aha moment if you've actually given in your class so remember you if, imagine if you're taking a lecture on restoration age in your college or you're probably teaching Afra Ben or you're teaching Congreve uh, if you just tell them about these small little things you know they, 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 they do get a lot of um, a they, they get a lot uh, excited oh there's so much that is written on this age also there's so much that I can explore in this age also so your previous year's questions also enable you to launch into uh, more discussions on what are the topics what are the other things that you can relate in those topics that is also interesting okay uh, right so please keep that aspect in mind 
all right okay let's let's very very quickly take a look at let's very very quickly take a look at the next one arrange the following plays in the chronological order of the publication the chronological order the questions related to the chronological order country wife uh, it is written by vaichali remember country wife who's a writer vaichali this time we also did a question on jeremy collier this week we had actually done that this is coming in 16 seven, uh, 1675 is when it's coming all all for love by dryden 1677 right all for love 1677 by dryden dryden's work all together venice preserved by otway venice preserved is staged in 1682 by otway right by otway this is uh, this is presented in uh, 1682 and school for scandal is by rb sheridan this is coming in uh, this is coming on 8th uh, 8th may 1777 8th may 1777 so now i am sure all of you can put it in chronological order it is the country wife that you are having then you are having all for love so country wife is there you are having all for love you are having venice preserved you are finally having the school for scandal so what is the chronological order d a b c d a b c that is a chronological order all of them are very important dramatic writings even if you cover one important drama regularly you will be able to cover a stream of dramas which are important from your examination perspective right so that will really help you a research hypothesis is a research hypothesis is what is a research hypothesis you have to select two you have to select two okay you have to select two over here what is a research hypothesis everyone what is happening in in the case of a research hypothesis a, a proposition which is always true no it is not always true a provisional explanation of anything yes it is a provisional just like your provisional certificate till the time of final degree is not coming it's provisional till the time we don't prove it that is a hypothesis i have not proven it but i am i'm expecting it to be true i have not proven it but i am expecting it to be true a theory which will be disproved by evidence not necessarily my intention is not to disprove it my intention is not to disprove it i hope you are understanding that a statement which is assumed to be true for the sake of argument yes it is so so understand this also that when we are talking about uh, you know hypothesis uh, right now we are going to research more about it right but currently we are considering it to be true currently we are assuming that it is true currently we are assuming that it will be true altogether that is the assumption right that is the assumption that we are having so hypothesis is a principal instrument in research this is also question that comes in which is the principal instrument in research hypothesis is the principal instrument of research it is a principal instrument of research and the main function is to suggest new experiments new observations new areas that you can uh, look at so it is wanting to suggest that it is defined as a proposition or a set of proposition it is a proposition or a set of proposition that is coming in right it is either a proposition or a set of proposition that we are talking about and what you are able to see look at this look at this uh, understanding hypothesis is a supposition a proposition assumed for the sake of argument a theory to be proved or disproved by reference to facts a provisional explanation of everything please write this down please just write this down so what is it saying what is it saying just look 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 at this so a hypothesis this is according to the chambers dictionary a hypothesis is a supposition a proposition assumed for the sake of argument a theory to be proved or disproved by reference to facts a provisional explanation of anything that is the definition that is the definition of hypothesis i have always said research aptitude in english always club it with research aptitude in paper 1 right definitely take a look at that you can go over gulshan ma'am's essay uh, lectures also on that but do take a look at paper 1 research aptitude as well let's move on to the next topic <coughs> oh god sorry yes what is the right answer yes 
फर्स्ट इज राइट आंसर मेजोरिटी ऑफ यू आर गेटिंग इट राइट सो दिस इज अ रियली इजी क्वेश्चन ऑन डिसम्बर इलेवन एटीन ट्वेंटी थ्री रामोहन रॉय एड्रेस्ट अ लेटर टू द ब्रिटिश अथॉरिटी विच प्लीडेड फॉर मॉडर्न वेस्टर्न एजुकेशन एंड इज कंसिडर्ड हिस्टोरिकली इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ इंग्लिश एजुकेशन इन इंडिया सो दिस वॉज अ लेटर एड्रेस टू लॉर्ड एमरिस दिस वॉज अ लेटर दैट ही वॉज एड्रेसिंग टू लॉर्ड एंड एमरिस सो यू नो यू आर एबल टू सी दैट ही वॉज अ चीफ एडवोकेट ऑफ साइंटिफिक लर्निंग एंड ही वॉज ऑल्सो वेरी इनोसेंट इन नाइव because unintentionally he was playing in the hands of the britishers altogether which languages are these words borrowed from where are these words borrowed from which all languages are we able to see that these words are coming from which all languages are these words coming in from yes 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 sam sangita we will be doing a northeast letter as well so uh, all of you whichever paper you want me to cover uh, please just write an email to me because i'll be preparing by today midnight i have to give the uh, schedule for next uh, youtube session series neerja.raheja@gradeup.co just uh, mark me an email uh, suggestions for papers i'll incorporate those respective papers okay uh, any paper that you would want us to do uh, i'll help you out with that okay okay Okay. Now let's just quickly see. Yes, 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 yes. Mongoose is Marathi word from mongus, right? This is from mongus, mongus that is coming in. So this is a Marathi word that we are talking about. This is a Marathi word that we are talking about. Okay. Uh, this term is used to identify the carnivorous animal, right? The carnivorous animal because uh, of the fact that uh, there is this carnivorous animal that you are having. Okay. Then you are coming on to the word loot is taken from the word uh, Hindi, right? It's coming from Hindi. Uh, the sun. Sanskrit word is lut lutra lutra right that is a Sanskrit word but this is actually taken from Hindi this is taken from Hindi curry is taken from tari ka uh, Tamil there is curry curry that you are having so this is a Tamil word that is coming in this is the Tamil word that you have and detail is taken from Malayalam right this is a word that is coming from Malayalam. so this question was also there so uh, when you are looking at the origins of english you are also looking at uh, european writings but you should also take a look at some words which are coming from other languages as well okay uh, words which are coming from other languages as well right uh, uh... yeah rakesh we did have the atm lecture uh, uh, today i'll i'll put that across i'll share the links again so from next week onwards i'll i'll make it a practice i'll be uh, working it out of a different system so i will share i'll download tel a telegram there only so that i can share the links with all of you okay all right who is the author of a fragment a fragment one of the earliest vampire stories in english uh, who is the author of this particular work we are also moving close to the end of the entire lecture because today we are practicing say about 15 or questions So this is a, this is uh, the third last question that you are having. Fragment is a work coming from the pen of. We haven't got the right answer yet. <clears throat> Excellent. Neha Bakhat has given the right answer. Neha Bakhat has given the right answer. So it is an unfinished vampire horror story written by Byron. Byron, right? Uh, so please keep that in mind. The burial of fragment, a fragment. This is uh, by Byron. Lord Byron is the creator of this entire work. So, like I told you in the morning, also please do study the romance prose writers, the uh, the romantic prose writers. Do cover those because a lot of times these questions are coming in. But Byron is the right answer. Which one of the following best explains para language? This is the second last question. Let's see how many of you are able to answer it. Para language. para language para language what is it what is it that we are talking about absolutely right para language is the way in which people show that they mean other than what the words that they are using like your pitch your intonation your speaking tempo uh, the way that you are speaking so basically uh, rather than the words the other things which are there that is para language the non verbal communication that we are talking about right a lot of times imagine if uh, you know if you you are somebody can i come today to your place and you like Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, so so you get that. Okay, you know the person is not asking us to come. The 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 facial expressions are showing that. Okay, moving on to the last question for today. Who among the following was the first director of Central Institute of English and Foreign Languages, uh, Hyderabad, now EFL University, now EFL University. <clears throat> 
the english and foreign languages university hyderabad it was founded in 1958 1958 is when it was founded it was founded as a central institute for uh, central institute of english cie central in institute of english that was the way yes absolutely right absolutely right absolutely right no that was the previous one no 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 the mandate of the university was that you know they wanted to uh, make sure research is done teaching or uh, um, uh, in teaching of english altogether no i haven't got the right answer yet everybody is saying a a a a a read the question properly is professor <clears throat> c c c c c who was the first director of the central institute of english and foreign languages which is now efl university so you are able to see that he was actually yes 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 absolutely right okay the comments are now coming in okay okay sorry sorry i thought this was the previous comment that you're talking about so uh, here what you are able to see is that gokak was the first director of ce uh, c uh, now now look at this okay so the ce uh, fl which was coming in that is of course professor vk gokak who was coming in uh, but when you are looking at the university uh, overall there were multiple people who were coming and administering it right now uh, I'll, i'll tell you why these kind of questions are important these kind of questions are now important because they want to gauge are you aware about the university education that is taking place so your comments came in later your, uh, all your comments of gokak they came in later all right so uh, these kind of questions have also started coming in uh, the the first director just like you 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 got the question on the uh, you know the cultural studies first director or the birmingham university question this year in the net so these kind of institutes which are associating literary uh, trend all together these kind of questions are also coming be it indian or be it foreign you know universities these questions are coming so also know about the research landscape that we are talking about okay <clears throat> yeah yes uh, so if you have uh, now now listen to me very very carefully uh, now today of course because you know this week I, i'm i'm slightly under the weather that is the reason uh, we we are not completing the entire paper but we will be going forward we we'll, of course not if not entire paper but we will be covering parts of the paper so say uh, we'll cover 25 questions or at least 25 to 50 questions in one class itself uh, and going forward we'll practice previous year's questions as well as cover topics okay so this entire uh, like you know upcoming next time we will practice topics and we'll also practice previous years papers so be prepared for both covering papers as well as covering certain topics that i am including for all of you i will be sharing the details of uh, the the youtube calendar as well with all of you so that all of you can be prepared for it accordingly okay uh, the homework i've already given you the homework i've already given you um, you know in the morning so please revise all the four lectures wednesday thursday friday saturday the four 8 am lectures please revise those the homework that i have given you new criticism marxism uh, romantic age and modern age from rotledge please cover that and come right thank you so much for joining in i'll see you guys soon take good care of yourselves bye <clears throat>